What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Michelle. If you're new, if you're old, welcome! In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my one year anniversary of my date piercing. Date, dath, I don't know how you guys want to pronounce it. But um, I'm going to show you and tell you what my piercing looked like during the healing process, what worked for me, what didn't work for me, and what it looks like now. So you guys, I got my date piercing, I want to say like mid-June of last year. Y'all, I just seen the piercing and I was just like, damn, like it looks really cute. It looks really unique. I like how you can change the jewelry and stuff. And I like how it sits like in the ear. So I feel like in order for people to actually see it, they have to be really like looking in your ear, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but when I first got the piercing, you guys, I loved it. It was beautiful. I was just like, but I was very scared because I thought I was going to keloid. I don't usually keloid. I get a lot of piercing bumps. I know with my conch piercing, I end up getting a piercing bump on the back of this one while it was healing. Um, but I feel like this Dave piercing, I had like such a hard time like trying to like heal. They said it takes about six months to a year, but I feel like mine healed a little bit after a year, I want to say. Um... I just think since it how it sits in your ear and then you know you use your ears a lot to talk on the phone or like I'm a side sleeper so um, I sleep usually on my left side and a lot of pressure you know when you're sleeping is on that side so y'all the healing process was awful um, it was so many people that was telling me you should just take it out you should just take it out and I'm just like no 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 I was like I think this is the healing process this is what it's supposed to do but they were like I don't know bro so I was trying to like weigh out my options because I'm just like damn I'm like I really wanted this jewelry piece in my ear I'm like but I didn't want to take the jewelry out and end up having it heal and then having them to re-pierce it through scar tissue so I feel like that would even took longer for my piercing meal so I'm going to tell you guys the story. I'm going to try to make it fast. Um, but once I got pierced, I started getting these like piercing bumps, which I thought were keloids. Um, but I did like my research and they were saying with cartilage piercings, it's common to get piercing bumps on your piercing. I mean, then it started getting bigger. Like I said, I'm going to show you guys a photo. I think I still have a photo of what it looked like. I could feel it like touching the top of my ear almost. And I'm just like, mm, I don't think this is right. I was cleaning it how I was supposed to. I was doing everything that I thought I needed to do. I wasn't even touching it because it was still really sore and tender. So when I left from the piercing shop, they gave me this piercing aftercare. This is just a uh, wound mist. So I would spray that in my ear and then I would go in with a Q-tip and then just like clean, like dab. I would dab. I wouldn't really so much like white just because like I said that bar or the hoop that's in my ear it would cause friction and it, it would move um oh you want to hear something crazy I feel like when I've seen people get pierced with this piercing they usually have a bar because the bar doesn't like seem to move as much as the hoop does when you're cleaning it so um they actually end up putting like I said the hoop they put this gold hoop inside my ear first when I first started uh when I first got my piercing but then my ear started to swell and then I was getting these piercing bumps and they were noticing like okay well maybe the jewelry that is inside your ear um is too snug for the piercing because it's not giving it enough room to like breathe or you know so I was like okay I go back they end up taking this smaller ring out they put a larger diameter ring inside my ear and um I'm like, okay, this should probably work. You know what I'm saying? A larger diameter, it gives enough room for my ear to breathe, for it to, you know, heal like it's supposed to. Y'all, no, okay? Let me tell y'all. I was having, still having the same issue. I was having the piercing bumps on the top, piercing bumps on the bottom. It was getting really red and just really, like, irritated. Um, and then I called and sent him a photo. And I was like, this is kind of what my ear is looking like. And he was like, well, he's like, that's normal. He's like, you know, we just switched out the jewelry. He was like, you know, so just give it a few weeks. He was like, and then see how it works. So I waited out, y'all. And I was online. I was on Amazon searching, like, um, what to put on piercing bumps, you know, to heal your piercing. And I actually came across this Briotech. And it's so crazy. Hopefully you guys can see that. My lights are kind of bright. Uh, Brio Tech. This has like a small percentage of bleach in it. And my piercer, he was telling me, he's like, if push comes to shove, he's like, go online. He's like, and look for this brand called Brio Tech. He's like, a lot of people that I have came encounter with, he was like, um, have used this stuff. And he says it really, really works. Like, it's not enough to bleach your clothes, but you definitely can smell the bleach in here. Um, 
It's all natural, fragrance free, oil free. And it gives you instructions on what to use. Um, at first I brought the brought. At first I had bought the spray bottle because I wanted to test it out and I noticed how it was working so I was like you know what I'm just gonna buy the what size is this? This is the one liter so I can just fill up my spray bottle but um, I was starting to use this topical spray and I would spray 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 and then I would just wipe it or sometimes I would even leave it. Actually I think on the directions it says Oh, it says blot or air dry. So usually I would spray it and just let it like air dry. Okay, I'm cleaning it, but nothing was really happening. I still had the bumps on top of my ear and I'm like, okay, well, nothing is really happening. Y'all, and then I went in with the tea tree oil because I know a lot of people talk about using tea tree oil on their piercing bumps and it goes away. I used it and y'all, the bumps went away, but my ear was so dried out. Again, I think I have a picture of what my ear looked like. To where I'm just like, ooh, I was like, I feel like I'm, like, my ear is having, like, a chemical, like, burn or chemical reaction or something. Because tea tree oil is really, really strong, you know? So, I would put it on a small Q-tip and then I would go in and, like, dab where my bumps are. And then, like, within, like, maybe a week or two, it would dry it out. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now it's, it's fine again. You know what I'm saying? But then, like, if I wasn't consistent with it as I was, the bone would minimize. And then the following week, like, say if I were to sleep on it, or if I were to use my AirPod or something like that, the bumps would come back. And I'm just like, uh. So I was struggling with piercing bumps my whole entire healing process. And it was really annoying because I felt like people could actually see the bumps versus seeing my piercing. You get what I'm saying? Like, I was really like subconscious about it because, um, one of my friends, they even know, they're like, what's wrong with your ear? And I'm just like, damn, like, it really looks that bad. They're like, yeah, it looks very painful. So I was like, damn. So, y'all, I was still using the tea tree oil. It was working, but then, like I said, it would come back. It would work and come back when my ear would get so dried out right here to where I would just sit and just, like, pick at my ear. And it was, like, really crusty, right? So then... Um, we were probably coming up on maybe almost the year mark and I was like, you know what? I was like, you know, if it hits the year mark and my ear still isn't healed, then I'm just, I'm not gonna, um, I'm just gonna take it out. But then I end up talking to one of my homegirls and she has the same piercing and she has said maybe the, uh, piercer should have actually pierced you with a bar instead of a hoop. Cause she says when it comes to cleaning process, she was like, um, by you cleaning it, she was like, your hoop is just moving. And she was like, it's not really giving it time to heal. She was like, versus if you had a bar in there. But I was like, okay. She went to downsize my jewelry um, because I thought my ear was doing better than what it really was doing. Um, actually, I thought it was doing pretty excellent. Um, I had used, again, tea tree oil on it. Um, and it was, it was fine, you know. So I went, made the downsize appointment. And um, he ended up switching out the jewelry. He said it looked really good, but he said that he could tell that I was using some sort of chemical on it. And I was just like, what are you talking about? And he was just like, he was like, your ear is like, you know, badly like dried out. He was like, um, I was like, yeah, I use tea tree oil. He was like, yeah. He was like, even though online or people may say, you know, it works really well on piercing bumps. He's like, I would not recommend tea tree oil on piercing. And I'm like, really? And he was like, yeah. He was like, you know, your ear. He was like, he's like, I'm sure you've seen your ear in the mirror. He's like, it's really dried out. He's like, it's almost like a burn or something. He says, if you ever notice, if you put tea tree oil on a plastic bag, he says, it'll like pretty much like eat away at it. He's like, that's how strong it is. He was like, so just imagine you putting that on your skin. He's like, that's what it's doing to your, um, that's what it's doing to your ear. And I'm just like, oh, you know what? You're right. So I was just kind of like, okay, well, he was like, I think you should stay away. He was like, from um, the tea tree oil. He's like, I know it helps. He was like, but it just makes matters worse. He was like, I would just say, continue cleaning it like you do he's like and dry it really really well so I'm like okay after I downsized the jewelry you guys like my piercing was starting to heal the way it was supposed to heal there was no bumps it bled a little bit when he actually ended up switching the jewelry out to the smaller downsize but I haven't had any issues with it I've been cleaning it oh also he told me when I'm cleaning it he's like make sure you dry it really really well he was like you know a lot of people talk about using q-tips he was like but the fibers on the q-tips can get around your uh piercing and like make it irritated but he said something about, about the fibers in the q-tips he says causes your piercing to like heal faster so like i said y'all 
ever since I ended up going to get it downsized I haven't had any issues my ear is actually not even really sore anymore um, it looks really really good nice and snug nice and cute I'll show you guys how I usually clean it even though I'm still like completely like fully healed I still clean it as if I just gotten the piercing I don't touch it if my hands are dirty um, I make sure I wash my hands before I even touch my piercing so like I said I'm gonna show you guys um, how I clean my piercing so I'm just going to take some regular Q-tips and sometimes I'll either spray the Q-tip or I'll actually spray inside my ear. I need a mirror. Hold on one second. Alright you guys, so I'm going to get my Briotech Topical Skin Spray and I'm just going to spray that in my ear and then I'm going to take my Q-tip and I'm just going to wipe that along my ear. It's like a little dirty but not much I cleaned it uh, last night just clean around it ooh that was that hurt a little bit mm, I had some uh I had a little bit of stuff in there again we're just gonna wipe around where the piercing is you want to make sure you clean it really really well like you're probably gonna go through a few q-tips probably one of my favorite piercings because I feel like <clears throat> oh excuse me see it I've gotten it a few times where people thought it was a hearing aid in my ear they're like what is that in your ear and I'm just like oh it's a piercing or they'll think it's like a bug or something they're like I've never seen anything like that and it's so crazy because I feel like the piercing is very, very common. Actually, I'll probably change the jewelry out. But y'all, piercing jewelry is expensive as hell. Like, super expensive. This is, like I said, 14 karat gold. So, of course, it's going to be expensive. But I feel like anything that you're piercing your body with, you should pierce your body with uh, really, really good jewelry. I just think it's really, really important. Especially for me. Um, I know I'm allergic to, uh, like, nickel and all that other stuff. So, I'm like, I can't. I can't have any type of uh, jewelry in my body that isn't real. Um, so, like I said, gold, you never can go wrong with gold. It's simple, it's simplistic, it looks really, really good. Um, and I wear a lot of gold jewelry, so it just kind of, everything just kind of goes well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, what you guys experience with your cartilage piercings or like date piercings or anything. I really, really want to know. Um, or let me know if you guys used any of these products that I mentioned. And without further ado, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!